ESCOM's Quebec nuclear power station is at the risk of a total shutdown. This is according to energy expert Chris Yelland. He says the continued delays in the return of Unit 1 is threatening the plant. The struggling power utility says the return of the affected unit has again been delayed by another 10 days. For more on this, I'm joined by Chris Yelland. Uh, Chris, thank you for making time for us. So, so ESCOM previously extended the expected date for the return to service of Unit 1 uh, several times. I think the initial completion date was mid-June this year. Now we're hearing of a scheduled date of November. Uh, I suppose the question is, will this unit be returned to service on this new date? We, we don't know. And ESKIM itself has indicated in a media release that, that there is a whole sequence of tests that have to be done before it can be returned to service. And uh, that these tests are done in sequence, one after the other. And any problem experienced along the way with one of the tests or another of the tests uh, means that this whole sequence of tests cannot proceed. So, uh, look, I'm not predicting that there will be a uh, simultaneous outage of Unit 1 and 2, but what I'm suggesting is that these delays are adding to the risk of this happening. So yeah. uh, the risk is increasing the more delays that are experienced. And, uh, you know, one might argue that, oh, a 10-day delay is insignificant. Uh, and this is a – that we have, we've been told that this is another 10-day delay. But in the current circumstances where timing is already critical and tight, yeah. A 10-day delay is actually significant. And uh, what I'm saying is that this increases the risk of the possibility of two units being out simultaneously. Yeah. There the, are a number of dates as well. Like you look at early November, some mid-November. When exactly is Unit 1 going to be returned to commercial operation at full output? Yeah. So uh, as can say uh, that if tests all go to plan, and there are no delays with one or the other test causing a break in the sequence, uh, unit number one will be synchronized to the grid on the 30th of October. Uh, but uh, before it starts delivering power in commercial service, uh, ESKIM has to ramp up the power. And this is done over a period of about 10 days. Uh, and, of course, as you ramp up the power, problems may exhibit themselves, uh, and those have to be attended to. Uh, but uh, assuming that all goes well, uh, after synchronization on the 30th of October, the unit will be in commercial service operating at full load um, on the 13th of uh, November, which uh, is about 10 days after it was originally indicated to us. Yeah. But uh, then, um, of course, it has to operate stably for a while mm. uh, before they switch off unit number two. So unit number two is currently operating, uh, and once unit number one is back on the grid and operating and delivering commercial power in a stable manner, yeah. they will then switch off unit number two. Now, of course, this 10-day delay delays the switch off of unit number two by 10 days. Yeah. Unit number two has got to undergo exactly the same procedure as unit number one. Now, unit number one, it took 11 months. It will take 11 months if it comes back on stream as planned. Uh, but ESCOM do uh, expect that unit number two will go smoother because of the lessons that they've yeah. learned along the way. And, and what are some of those... One. Yeah, what are some of those lessons? Because as you say, Unit 2 has to, to, is expected to be shut down for refueling, maintenance, replacement of its uh, three uh, steam generators. So what lessons can be learned from what happened with Unit 1 so that we don't see another long outage of this unit? Yeah, so look, the routine maintenance and the refueling is pretty standard stuff. Uh, that normally takes about three months. Um, the steam generator replacement is a really major project. It is, Eskim has itself described this as the uh, most complex project ever undertaken at Kuburg since it was commissioned in the first instance some 39 years ago. So it is a complex process of cutting pipes, 
cutting cables and removing uh, the steam generators, which are massive pieces of uh, metal work, uh, and replacing them with new ones and re-welding the pipes and reconnecting the cables. Uh, now, in this process this last year, uh, which started uh, on Unit 1 in the middle of December 2022, and as I say, is intended to be complete by the 13th of, of November this year. Um, there have been major problems uh, involving uh, the contractor, Framatome, a French nuclear uh, contractor, uh, and Eskom. Now, there's a lot of finger-pointing that goes on, and Eskom has got a lot of claims and finger pointing against Framatome and likewise Framatome are pointing fingers at Eskom. Uh, these are complex contractual disputes and complex matters that I can't really go into. Uh, not only do I not have uh, the, the, the detailed information, but I also don't have the time. Uh, you know, it, it would take some time to, to detail all of these issues. But short and tall of it is there have been a lot of contractual disputes and finger-pointing between the contract and Eskom uh, as to the reasons for these delays and who is to blame and who's going to bear the cost. And it's already involving litigation or arbitration, at least, in the initial instance. And these matters will probably only be settled and the final judgment mm. made about what went wrong and who's to blame uh, you know, will only be known in the years to come, if ever. Uh, so... Complex matter, but it is uh, the, the, this project should have been completed by the end of June. That is the unit number one. It's now getting on for the end of October, and it's still not back on stream. So you can see that there's been about five months delay. Mm -hmm. So once unit one is returned to service in, in November, will it be shut down again next year when Quebec's current operating license expires? Because the National Nuclear Regulator yeah. may not be in a position to grant that extension for, for the operating license. Yeah. The thing is, uh, Eskom has already announced uh, to the um, Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Energy in Parliament, some months ago in fact, that after Unit 1 returns to service, which is now scheduled for the 13th of November, uh, about nine, uh, eight months later, on the 21st of July, it is scheduled for another 200-day shutdown. Now, what this is telling me, and I am speculating here, is you've got to know that the 21st of July, 2024, which is the date this 200-day shutdown is going to occur on Unit 1 again, that is the date when the license for Kuberg expires. Mm. And what this is telling me is that the work on Unit Number 1 is not complete yet in order to get its license. And there have been reports, and ESKIM have advised us, and there have been reports made public, that they have to do what is called an overpressure test of the containment building of the nuclear reactor of unit number one. Uh, and this is to do with uh, tests that are required, mandatory tests, to ensure that there are no leaks in the containment building. Now, the containment building is a concrete structure that covers the reactor. And its purpose is to contain uh, any radiation that may occur in the case of a serious accident. Mm. And, of course, uh, if there are leaks, this radiation will leak out. So they have to do this thing called the overpressure tests, uh, which is basically done to, ensure, to, to test and make sure that there are no leaks. Now, it has been reported that there are cracks in the concrete. Yeah. Uh, the steel reinforcing has corroded as a result of the sea air and the fact that it is right against the sea, and, and, and that these cracks uh, may be uh, you know, a cause for concern and leakage, and they may need to be repaired. So this is a test that is currently scheduled to start sometime after the 21st of July, after this shutdown. So what it's telling me, and I am speculating, is that uh, the work necessary uh, to get an extended license for Kuberg on unit number one is not complete yet. And that's why they have to shut down on the 21st, the same day that the license expires. Which is quite interesting, because if the because is the suggestion then that, as you've explained earlier, if the application for, for Unit 2, uh, that, that extended expiry date is not granted, does that then mean both Units 1 and 2 may have to shut down on the 21st of July? 
Yeah, now you're homing in on the real point of the matter. At the moment, there is one license for the whole of Kuburg. Yeah. So if that license is not extended, the whole of Kuburg must shut down. Now, we know that Unit 1 is planned to shut down. They hope that Kuburg Unit Number 2 will have completed its uh, steam generator replacement uh, by the end of July. But because there's only one license that expires on the 21st of July, if Unit 1 is not ready, then both Unit 1 and 2 will have to shut down because there's only one license for the whole power station. So Eskom has applied to the regulator uh, to basically have a license terminating date for Unit 1 and a separate license terminating date for Unit Number 2. And the Unit 2 uh, uh, license expiry date, uh, they've asked for this to be extended by 18 months with a ration, on the rationale that actually Unit Number 2 was commissioned a year and a half, 18 months after unit number one. So if unit number one's license expires at the end, uh, on the 21st of July, they're hoping that they can convince the regulator to extend the, uh, uh, the, 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 the license for unit number two uh, uh, for another 18 months. Now, the re regulator, uh, that is not NERSA, it's the National Nuclear Regulator, has not yet replied to ESCOM's request. Uh, in other words, it has not made a ruling yet. Mm. And Eskom are waiting uh, rather anxiously um, for this ruling. Now, Eskom do say that they're pretty confident that the National Nuclear Regulator will grant this extension for unit number two, but it's not in the bag yet. And uh, if the regulator does not grant this extension, then both units number one and number two will shut down on the 21st of, of, mm. of July 2024. I do believe that, you know, <laughs> in these kind of matters, uh, when there's a lot of pressure, you know, also to, to keep the power and the lights on, uh, a plan will ultimately be made. So uh, I, I, I got a feeling that one way or another, uh, enough pressure is going to be brought to bear on the nuclear regulator to grant this extended license. But it is in the hands of the nuclear regulator, and, uh, and, and they are the ultimate uh, party that calls the shots in these, in these matters. Yeah. Uh, before before we, we wrap up, uh, Chris, let me get your thoughts on um, the announcement by ESCOM uh, that load shedding will remain suspended until Tuesday. W what do you think has been the reason behind, you know, this reprieve uh, of late? Hmm. Yeah, it's really very, very welcome news. And uh, if you were to look at the graphs that I publish every week uh, on what is called the energy availability factor of ESCOM, the week-on-week -week energy availability factor, you will notice clearly that at the beginning of this year, the energy availability factor at ESCOM was much lower than the same time last year, significantly lower. And over the course of the year, this gap between the energy availability factor of 2022, week on week, and the gap between the current year's energy availability factor has been closing week by week by week. Look, it's a little bit up and down because there is some sort of noise on these figures. But overall, the gap between the difference between 2022 and 2023 has been closing to the extent where last week the gap had actually closed. So we have now reached the we are now reached the energy availability factor that we were at the same time last year. Mm -hmm. That's a very good sign because at the beginning of the year the gap was very big. And it shows a progressive improvement in the performance of the availability of ESCO's fleet over this last year. And there, of course, are a number of reasons for that, uh, not least of which is the attention that has been given at the highest level from the Minister of Electricity uh, through to the National Energy Crisis Committee, uh, through to the people at ESCO themselves, through to the people on the power stations, on the, you know, at the coal face, you might say. So a lot of effort and work has been put into this, and it's starting to bear fruit. And, uh, and certainly uh, we expect it to improve uh, even further as the last uh, unit uh, that broke down at Kusili comes on stream. Now, you remember three units broke down uh, with a duct failure, uh, causing units one, two, and three to be out for the whole of, uh, for a year, actually, actually slightly more than a year. Uh, two of these units have been brought back to service, which is helping very significantly to mm. close the gap. The third unit is due to come on at the end of November or December. So that's very welcome news, and it is helping, mm. uh, you know, to, to improve the availability of the whole Eskom coal-fired fleet, and long may it continue.
Chris Elland. And congratulations, congratulations to Eskom and to the Minister uh, for these achievements. Wonderful. Chris, I appreciate your time this afternoon.